Uh, if you have a question, raise your hand and I'll bring you into the room. Or I'll meet you. Steve Popper. Tom, I guess just to start, um, preparations as, as you first look at what you, what I'm sure has been a lot of film of the Hawks, what you see about what you're facing here. Yeah, a very talented team. Uh, can put a lot of points up on the board. Uh, you know, Young, is, it starts with him, but the, the shooting that they have, the way Bogdanovich has played, Herter, uh, and Collins, and, and Capella up front poses a lot of problems, and then the depth. I think that's a big concern for us when you look at Alou Williams, so Gallinari, uh, getting Hunter back for them. Uh, it's, it's big, they're, they're deep, there's not much drop off. Uh, and they can put a lot of points up on the board. Brian Mahoney. <laughs> Tom, uh, Julius had some pretty good games against the Hawks. Uh, just wondering, you know, what it does for a team's confidence to players and the coach uh, when they've seen their guy come through time and time again against the opponent they're going to have to match up against. Yeah, well, the one thing we have to understand is the playoffs are a lot different than the, the regular season. Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, you don't know, you know, where you are in the schedule, how much travel they have, who's out, who's in. Uh, there's a lot of things that factor into it. And then once you get to the playoffs, teams are, are locked into you specifically. So they're going to know you inside and out, and you're going to know them inside and out. So uh, you just have to be ready to play. Hopefully you, you've built the uh, proper habits to get yourself ready to play. Uh, and then you're playing the same team over and over again. So there's an intensity to it, a concentration to it, uh, and a will to it. And we have to be ready. Tina Servasio. Hey, Coach, how much do you weigh playoff experience as you prepare your guys uh, for this first round? And Nerlens Noel has probably the most game experience where Julius Randle hasn't played in the postseason. How does that impact just the preparation of the team right now? Well, there's only one way to get experience is you have to be there. And so you learn uh, with each experience that you have. But I think uh, preparing yourself properly, that's what will give you confidence. Uh, and as long as we do that and we understand what goes into each and every game, uh, we should be ready to go. But then it's, you know, how well you can persevere through things. You're going to be tested in ways that you don't get tested uh, in the regular season because you're playing the same team over and over again. So we have a good blend. We have some guys that uh, don't have a lot of experience. We have other guys who, ha who do have uh, extensive experience when you look at a, a Derek and a Taj. And, you know, so uh, the veterans are always providing leadership, a Reggie Bullock and Alec. Uh, so that, that's a plus for us. Dustin Walters. Hi, right, Coach. I was wondering if you could reflect back on what you were doing in May of last year and how much you've grown as a coach being away from the game, and do you think that will be helpful for this run, and how has it helped out with this season? Well, first of all, I can't remember what happened last week, but uh, last May was, you know, obviously, you know, it was a very unusual year uh, because of the pandemic. and. You know, I think each year that I've been in the business, I've always tried to, the off season was my time to uh, look at things and visit with people, try to generate new ideas. And you always want to learn. I don't think you ever want to stop learning. So, and I'll do the same thing, you know, this year uh, when the season is over, try to visit with people to get new ideas. Uh, but whatever situation you have at that particular time, you want to maximize it. So. I thought it was a good opportunity for me to recharge, to visit with people, to take a look at things, to see how the league was changing, uh, and just uh, go from there. I always felt there would be another opportunity, uh, but I also knew that I didn't have to jump. I could be patient and wait for the right opportunity, and that's what I did. Mark Berman. Hey, Tom. Um just wondering where you stood right now with the starting lineup with Alfred Payton, who has struggled a, quite a bit in recent games. What do you see with Alfred in terms of his confidence right now? Come on, Berman. Well, look, it, 
I, and I've said this all along, but the depth of, of our team is one of our strengths. There's things that Alfred provides for us that, you know, are a big asset to our team. His size, his defense, uh, those are important factors. Uh, and then you look at it in totality. How does the team function? And so, uh, in, and as is the case with most players, there, there's going to be ups and downs. And, uh, you don't have to shoot well to play well and just go out there give us what you can uh, and, and every game is different so the thing that I love about our team is uh, if someone's not going good then another guy steps in and if he's going good everyone's cheering for that guy the most important thing is the team winning and that's where I want the focus to lie so the, the things that you can do well focus in on those things the things that you don't do well you stay away from those things, play to your strengths, cover up your weaknesses, and do that as a team. And if you do that as a team, the team will have success, and that's what we're focused in on. Mike, working on? Tom, I don't remember if it was you or if it was someone on your team who said you guys have a four-point shot uh, in the facility this year. How did that reorient uh, kind of your spacing and the type of shots and shooting you're looking for this season? Yeah, you know, the, the big thing was we, we knew we were going to have to work on our shooting. The four-point shot, we, li we like the, the concept of it, and you're seeing uh, what these players are doing now and putting time in. And sometimes those are, those are good shots depending on how you get them, uh, but it also provides a good line for spacing so that when you do get movement and you, uh, penetration and spray out and a pass-pass, that a guy can get rhythm into his shot if he's at the four, he's stepping into the three, uh, so his weight is going forward. So there's a lot of benefits to it, and I think that's where the game is going. Uh, and so we're trying to take advantage of it like most teams in the league are. Last question, Ian Bailey. Hey, um, excuse me, Frank Nelikina has been kind of in and out of the regular rotation, um, but given the, the fact that you guys have Trey Young that you're facing, and you've said that you, Frank's a good defender. How much consideration are you giving, you know, putting him into the regular rotation for defensive purposes? A lot, you know, and Frank has sort of been in that that role as a defensive stopper, and it, he adds great value to to our team. And what you guys don't see is he and Kevin Knox and a bunch of uh, other guys who aren't in the rotation how hard they work in practice and we value practice greatly so uh, they're providing a lot to our team uh, and whatever their strengths are we're going to try to take advantage of that and we want them to continue to improve and so that's a that's an important part of what we're doing here uh, but uh, all our players are critical to us.